Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about the static keyword. And we've looked at static before previously in a few of our lessons, so make sure you check those out if you haven't already before watching this one. Now, to continue our discussion about static, recall that static has to do with the lifetime of a variable. That is, when we make something that's static, it's going to persist forever because it's been allocated with the binary, so there's always room for that variable. So for instance, if we make a variable static within a function, every time we call that function, that variable's value will persist and it'll only be initialized one time, as we've discussed. And you can also have global variables that you make static and that sort of limits the scope to just that file. But again, that variable is always around or persisting. So the one area where we haven't talked about static yet is in a class. So what does that exactly mean as far as its lifetime and how we can access it? Well, this is a lesson, so let's go ahead and check it out. So I've got a motivating example here on the left side where I'm going to create this class API here. Now, just to make things a little bit simpler and get rid of some clutter, I'm just gonna make this a struct. And as we know, just a little bit of review here, everything is public by default. So it'll allow me to clean things up just a little bit for you. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we make a variable static within the scope of this class here. So I'm just going to create something here and I'll just make it an integer and we'll just have it called major here. Now this API is going to be something for storing the say major or minor version of some software that you have here and maybe you'll be able to query from this class the actual release version here. So this could be something common to have in your actual software and it's a good way to just organize a bunch of common variables together. Anyways, with that said, what exactly is going on here? Well, let's go ahead and just try to compile this and see what happens. Well, this seems to compile just fine here, okay? So let's go ahead and see what happens if I try to use this like a regular member variable. So I'm gonna create an instance of our API and do instance.major and maybe, well, we wanna set this to some value like say seven here. And let's go ahead and see what happens. So I'll save the code. Uh, oops, let me go ahead and save this, rerun, and wow, okay, we're getting a bunch of errors here. So what exactly is happening here? Well, if we look at this error, it says undefined reference to API colon colon major. Okay, so before I actually just show you how static works, which again, it's something that we can put in front of a variable type to do something with the actual lifetime of that variable. As we've done in the previous lesson, I wanna go ahead and explain what's going on here. And we have some clues for what's actually going on here because we have API and then we have colon colon, which again is the scope operator and then the actual member variable that's within this class. Now, this isn't a regular compiler error. Notice it is a linker error here. It's complaining about something about, well, relocations and undefined reference, this is usually our clue that it's a linker error and not a compiler error. Remember, a compiler error would tell us what line of source code and which characters or whatever uh, are actually incorrect here. So that means that something is wrong here with our sort of uh, linkage or how we are building this actual uh, API uh, user defined type here. So in order to fix this, what I'm going to do here is backtrack just a little bit here and give you a little bit of a conceptual uh, explanation of how this works here. So when I make something static in a class here, so here's our class or our struct here, and I'll just label it API. And I'm not as concerned with the member functions yet, but I have something here like major and minor. Now, as I put them here in our uh, API, and I'll label it, you know, it's our blueprint, which is again, exactly what a class or a struct is. This isn't exactly 100% right when we have this as static, or at least to think of it uh, in this way. The way that I actually wanna think about when I have a static member variable is that its scope is within this class. Now, that's to say that these variables really live outside of the class, okay? So their actual, uh, way that we address them is by using the scope operator. So API colon colon major and API colon colon minor. Okay, so again, paying close attention to this scope here that I have. And again, if we look at this uh, error here, you'll see that we have undefined reference to colon colon major here. 
Okay, so that means that we have this sort of um, declaration here, but we have no definition of it when we're actually trying to use major here. So we have to give it some sort of definition. And to do that, we do that outside of the actual class here. So I'll go ahead and do API major equals seven here, and it's a integer here. Okay, and let's go ahead and just comment this out. And in fact, I'm going to comment out the instance here just to make another point about how static variables work here. So let me go ahead and clear this. I'll recompile. You'll see that there's no errors here. And I can actually run this. And if I actually want to do something somewhat useful here, let's just go ahead and print out the sort of major version of this software, if you will. And again, I access this through the class here using the scope operator API major. And I'll just put an end line here just so things fit nicely on the screen. I'll recompile it, run it, and then we can see that major is printed out here with the value of seven. So again, a few interesting things here that we haven't seen yet in this series. The first being that there's no instance of API here. There's no, you know, uh, instance as I tried to declare here dot major or anything. Again, static variables exist uh, on their own here. So I'm going to make that a point here. Static variables in a class exist outside of the class. The scope is within the class, however. And this gives us the advantage that anywhere, if I had this struct or this class in a different file, I could actually access these variables here. So that might be useful, again, if you need to check what version the API is, a bunch amongst many different files, and so on. So that's one nice thing about the static specifier here. Now, a lot of folks, when they think of static, and I'm a little bit guilty of this too, we try to think of it as one variable, again, that's shared amongst instances of these classes. And again, that's not entirely true because, again, these variables live outside of the class and they have their own storage. Again, we could prove this by running obsjump and just seeing that they exist. And I'm actually going to do that right now just to, again, show you um, that that's uh, the case here. Um, I'm going to have to recompile this program with uh, dash g just so we get debugging symbols. And then we can use a tool like obsjump and dump out the symbol table. If you're on Linux, this is a great tool to do it. And let's go ahead and uh, make this just a little bit smaller here. And let's see if we can actually find major or minor. Now, in order to do this on other platforms like Mac, I think there's a tool called Old Tool that I've used before. Uh, on Windows, you could use the Windows subsystem for Linux if you want. But again, if I carefully look at these, you'll eventually find an API. You'll find things like five and major. Uh, the names are mangled here a little bit, which is OK. That's how C++ uh, gets away with uh, allowing you to have functions that are the same name but uh, have different types in them. Uh, but the point is that this is part of the actual binary, and we can see it here. So that's about as far as I want to go as far as you know, reverse engineering this uh, source code example. But again, just to show you again that those variables exist. Okay. Now, and again, in a way, they are shared amongst instances of classes, in the sense that they just exist. Uh, on our machine are only available in the actual scope of all those classes. So that's how the actual variable gets uh, shared amongst multiple instances of a class. OK, so with that said, a few other uh, things about uh, static here. If I make this const here, so if I make it um, a const static int, in which the value doesn't change. And let's try this here. So again, this is the uh, declaration. And then I've got to have my uh, definitions here. Let's see if I also match this to const. And I'll recompile, rerun, and that's OK. And if in the one case that you do have something that is const, you can actually assign it within the actual uh, struct, and that's okay. Uh, then you shouldn't get any of these um, 
errors about something that's unreferenced. And to be honest, in a um, example like this for API, it might make sense to just go ahead and make this a const value because you probably don't want to be able to just change it um, anyway. So I would say that this is probably a better sort of uh, implementation of this API uh, type here that we have. But for demonstration purposes, I just want to go ahead and show you that that is allowed here. Now, the next thing that I want to actually do is just show you how this works with uh, static member functions. Because for folks coming from a uh, Java background, you're probably familiar with the static void main Java and all these sort of things and wondering why is there static in front of uh, main in Java? Uh, that's probably for a different series, but I do want to show you that you can have static functions in uh, C++. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And I'll just write a static uh, function that returns a static int git uh, major version here. And it's just going to return the uh, major here. And let's go ahead and compare that with our line here. So instead of accessing directly the variable from API, we'll call from API the function git major version. And here it is, just so you can see it on one line. And I'll compile it, run it, and again, you'll see the same thing here. So if you want your static variables to be private, for instance, this is one way to do it. Now, let's go ahead and just see what happens as far as if we get any errors. If I go ahead and at line 10, say that this is just returning an int here. Okay, so I'm just returning an integer, but I'm trying to access a static variable. So let's go ahead and see what happens. If I recompile, well, you're going to get an error that looks something like this. Cannot call member function uh, API get major version without uh, object here. Okay, and that's again because we need some instance of an object here. I need to create this uh, instance here. And we can sort of reverse the way that this works. If I have a static function and then I have some... Uh, member variable, so member variable that belongs to each instance. Uh, let's just call it, um, and I'll prefix it with an M underscore so that you know it belongs to, um, it's a member variable that would belong to each instance. Uh, let's go ahead and see what happens if I try to, within a static function, return uh, M local. Uh, and let's just go ahead and do this here, M local. And if I try to compile it, well, again, you're going to get invalid use of member MAPI local in static member function. So static functions can only return the or use the static member variables. Regular functions that just return um, integers, so things that are not static, can, in fact, uh, work here. Uh, so this uh, works fine. I guess I just can't call this function here because it has to be static. Okay, so that's just something else to keep in mind. That's a common mistake that I see lots of beginners make when they're first learning about uh, static. So along those lines, if I have some static uh, function here, and let's see, I want to do something like with the, this pointer, maybe just print it out here. Well, again, I'm going to leave this a little bit as a uh, quiz for you uh, before I even try to compile this. And think about, again, since this is a static function, and I'm not allowed to work with things specific to instances of classes, can I access the this pointer here? Well, let's go ahead and try to compile. And again, it's going to get an error. This is unavailable for static member functions. OK, so that's just a way that you can remember or even test if you want to see, is this available to a specific member function or a static function, which is essentially shared between uh, classes because it's a function that's only accessible within the class scope. All right, folks, so with that said, let me go ahead and get rid of this. So we have a version that is working here. Um, oh, let me get rid of uh, M local and just return major. And the last thing that I want to show you is just how to structure a program with multiple files here where you would have this struct API. Uh, we haven't done that for a while, and I want to make sure that we're reinforcing that habit. And this is something that I often see beginners uh, struggle with. So I'm going to make the font a little bit smaller here. And as far as just where do you actually provide the definitions here for your uh, class? And that is, in other words, where do I put these uh, static uh, variables here? that would have the class scope of API. So really quick, what I'm going to go ahead and do is let's split this window. I'll just make an HPI 
uh, or excuse me, an API uh, header. And let's go ahead and just copy this in. I'll paste it. Let's split the window again. I'll make an API CPP. And this is where my implementation is going to go. And I'll include API HPP. And let's go ahead and move our implementation up here. And let's go ahead and move all of our definitions here. And again, let's get major function still has the scope here. And let's go ahead and yank these here and make sure that the constructor, which has the scope of API and the destructor also belongs here. And then we can get rid of our definition from this class here. OK, so let's start with uh, this much and see if we get things to um, compile. Now, the one uh, other thing, let's go ahead and add our header guards, if not defined, API HPP, define uh, this one, and at the very end, an end if. OK, so here we've got a pretty uh, complete example, and then we want to make use of it in our main file. So I'll include their API. And when I compile this, I'll need to include our API.cpp. Uh, and let me just give one look at this to see if it'll work. I suspect we are going to get one more error, but I want to encounter it just so you can go ahead and see. So if I try to compile this, this looks fine. I have the main, I have the API here. Um, I'm going to get one error here that says cannot declare member function static int, etc., etc., to have static linkage. And again, this goes to the sort of where do these functions uh, belong? So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just get rid of that static here. Try to recompile, rerun it, and we'll see that's rerunning. And again, this when I declare a function as static, again, it's just saying where the scope is. So again, static, we can treat as just almost a regular function, except when I put the declaration within the class, it's just saying that, hey, this is only going to be available within API here. OK, that's its sort of lifetime or, or duration here. OK, so that's why I didn't need the static keyword in front here. OK, so there's a full example so you can see how to separate out these things in different files and play around with it. It's something that I often see folks uh, get a little bit uh, stuck on when first learning C++ and working with static functions. So static can be very useful. You'll see it in various design patterns, things like the singleton patterns, things like logging classes or uh, the API class, for example, where I did an example. So I hope this was a useful video. I hope it was insightful and clear some confusion about static. We saw some of the common errors and how to fix them. If you found that was helpful, go ahead and give a uh, thumbs up here, smash the like button, and make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss other videos in our C++ series. There are still many, many, many more to come here. Thanks for your time, folks, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.